So what are the implications for you and your family if this doesn't get fixed? I'll lose my house. You lose your house? I'll lose my house. And your business? Business is gone. I've had to sell all the assets out of the business. So your business is gone already? Yeah, it's, it's finished. I'm now, I'm now a subcontractor. By right. myself, single contractor. Yeah. Bringing home, about, I'm earning around about $2,500 a week. And out of that, there's about $1,600 a week going in bills. Back to the subcon. Back to Wh the, which is from your previous which business? Is from the business. These just to try and pay off? Just to pay them off. Yep. And how, how much does Max Ma Rix owe you? About 130000 130 grand. Plus legal and interest. Yeah. I'm the only subcontractor at the moment that's making the noise with these guys, and they don't like it. We were the one who the, um, the current affair program. Um, I got a lot of heat off that. They knew that I was working for another builder, and they approached me in Burke Street in Melbourne. I'm a smoko, so they know, they've got eyes everywhere. They know what I'm doing. Um, these guys turned up in, in um, CFMU jumpers, which I knew they weren't a part of the CFMU because I've been working with you guys trying to get me money out of these guys. So, so they turned up, this was Matrix. Maxtra. Maxtra people turn up Maxtra's. with CFMEU <clears throat> t-shirts on. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that they've got nothing to do with the CFMEU. I'm a union, I'm a member of the un union. Oh, okay. I know, I know for a fact that these guys aren't, the, aren't, aren't, aren't with the union. At one stage, I, I come out of, when our house burnt down, our insurance company put us up in a rental. Yeah. No one knew the rent, where the rental was in Langatha which where I live in, in South Gippsland. Me and my family moved into this home. Um, about April, May, might have been June, I'd left the house about five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning to go to work um, in, my, in my ute. I backed out of the driveway. As I was backing up the, up the, out of the driveway, a guy jumped in and said, a guy jumped into the car, in the passenger side car, which I'd recognise his face because he'd been to my work premises numerous times, demanding money. Um, he said, let's go for a drive. So at that particular time, uh, we, he took me for a drive. We went up the back of Foster. Um, there was another car following me. Um, my wife, I, I informed my wife that, and, and my employees that I won't be at work at the moment, I'm running late. And I just happened to put in Maxra in the text, um, which raised alarm bells to my wife, so she called the police. At that particular time, the guys would take me up the back of Foster, uh, rough me up, dump me out in the, out in the bush, um, stole my car. Um, I was rescued by the police helicopter probably about four or five hours later, out in the bush, scrabbling. Um, they found my car, my car was beaten up. About $15,000 worth of damage done to my, done to my vehicle. Um, the police, at the end I made a report to the police, the foster police. They thought it was all, all a big, big hoax, a bit iffy. Um, I spoke to my lawyer regarding this. He said, take all your evidence down to the CRB in one faggy. Lay it all out on the table and just show the CLB what you're dealing with, with these guys. Once I did all that, their attitude changed. Um, and is this still an ongoing investigation? Yeah, I haven't heard anything from for about 12 months. So you haven't heard from the... That's the state police for 12 months? No. No, I haven't heard anything, any follow-ups. Yeah, which these guys are a part of a Viking gang. So, so, so you're a, do you know who they were, the people that roughed you up? Yeah, I've seen them on, on the side in Elizabeth Street. Um, they come in on Elizabeth Street at one particular time. There was two guys. One of the guys I know, I, I know his face. He's been, I've had dealings with him at my house and at my work. Um, one particular time down at down there, these two guys were brought in, or one particular guy was brought in to stand guard at the at the building the building site when Frank was there, as like a body protector, because at one particular time there was a group of banditos with, um, with jackets on with their their patches. They come and there was about 20 motorbikes turned up to the site looking for Frank Nadinik. Frank had actually got wind of this and was, was around the corner in a cafe. Um, these guys had clearly made it, made it known to all the subbies on that site that they were chasing about $30,000 because there was a, a plumber that was owed about $60,000 from the previous companies that Frank had gone bankrupt. So, so, so we've now got bikies being, one group of bikies being used to try and recover Yep. Money for a plumber. Yep. In in the industry. This plumber and, was... and, and other bikies protecting. That's right. Nadini from the the other bikies. That's right. It's, it's bizarre. Frank Nadini owed this plumber money. This this plumber I'd, I've never met him, but I knew he was dying of cancer. 
he had a young family and he wanted to try and recover as much money as he possibly can before he passed away. I believe he has passed away and I do believe they didn't get any money. But he thought the only, I suppose you can't talk for him, but he obviously thought the only way to do that was to use outlaw motorcycle gangs. Well, I know subcontractors have gone to uh, Gatto Corp, Mike McGatto, gone to their, their debt collecting agency to actually get money to try and get them to recover the debts. From the Nadeek? From the Nadeek. From the Dini. And, and these guys, Gatto Corp, have had dealings with Frank Nadeek before and have recovered some money on previous bankruptcies. Um, but this time, they, they just can't get any money out of this guy. So if, if there was, um, in your circumstance, you know, and, you know you're, you're in a position now that, that is very difficult to recover. You, you've gone through these problems. My but, best option right now, financially, would be for me to go personal bankrupt. To go bankrupt? That would be my, the best way out for myself to do that. But I'm not doing it. So you're, you're working as a subby yep. to try and pay off the debts that this Maastricht company have basically forced on you? Yes. All right? Um, but if there had been a, a national uh, trust fund where, Nadir, where the, the money had to go into the trust fund uh, for your project, your contract, that, that would have solved all this problem, wouldn't it? Oh, for sure. Has ASIC been in contact with you? No. About any of this? We've sent emails to ASIC, stating, stating this. When did you send the emails to ASIC? Uh, my wife sent emails to ASIC, I think she sent them numerous times, a couple of months ago, before the current affair program and after the current affair program. So even after it had national publicity, ASIC didn't come back to you? No. No, we've also, she's also um, sent emails with all the documents and the links to all this stuff on Maxtra to the ATO. Yeah. To get them involved as well. Well, I'm sure ASIC are listening into this. So they should come well prepared when they come to our hearing as to why they have ignored your plight. We, ASIC will be appearing. Mm. Uh, they will be monitoring this hearing now. Uh, so they better start looking as to what they've done, why they, what they haven't done, and why they haven't been of any assistance to you uh, in this uh, terrible situation that you find yourself in.